Welcome, brothers and sisters in Christ, to our evening or Vesper service. I would ask you, as we get ready to pray together this ancient prayer of the church, would you take just a moment to silence your breathing, to set aside your worries, to bring them to the Lord, so that together we may pray to our Lord and our God. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And illumine your church. give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set lights in the sky to govern night and day, in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. You led your people into freedom, enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, for you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures we give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. I invite you now to pray with me Psalm 84. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. 
Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the balsam valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will be seen in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather stand at the threshold of the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield, bestowing grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, beginning with verse 5. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from your flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person will be like a bush in the wastelands. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in Him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It is not fear when heat comes, its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. This ends the reading for this day. Let us pray. Now speak, Lord, in this moment while we wait on Thee and hush our hearts to listen with expectancy. Amen. I want to speak a bit today about the providence of God and about perseverance in using the providence of God in our, in our lives, the idea that God is with us and cares for us and gives us what we need, not always what we want, there's a difference, but what we need and that we trust daily in God's providence for us. And this allows us to persevere. Uh, there's a lot of talk about the perseverance of the saints. It's a, one of the pieces of, of context that we use in de- dividing denominations. There's been a dividing line over that term over the years of what that means. But we all agree, we all agree that we're to persevere in our daily lives. Uh, if not in eternity in the way some people mean, then our daily lives are to persevere because God is with us and gives us the encouragement and the, forth- the, the force we need through the Holy Spirit, the, the, the kind of get up and go-ness of our faithfulness to go into the world and live as faithful people. So I want to share a, a couple stories with you about perseverance and also a devotion. Young William Wilberforce, uh, if you don't know that name, he was a, one of the guiding forces and really kind of the tip of the spear to lead to the end of slavery in England. And there's a story about him that in the early 1700s into the mid-1700s, he was horribly uh, depressed. He'd been fighting this battle for time and time again. He'd just been in going to the people in Parliament. He had been speaking to people in the area. He had been preaching it as much as he could to anyone who'd listen, and it wasn't getting anywhere. He just kept getting stonewalled on this, and he felt like perhaps with all the pushback he was getting, including anger and almost violence, that maybe it would never come to pass. Tired and frustrated, he opened his Bible one night, and he began to leaf through it, hoping to find some word of encouragement in Scripture. And a small piece of paper fell out and fluttered to the floor, it was a letter written by John Wesley, the, one of the founders of the Methodist movement, shortly before his death. William Warburg read it again. He had read it time and time again, but he had forgotten the words on this night and needed to be reminded of them. Hear this quote. Unless the divine power of God has raised you up, I see not how you can go through your glorious enterprise in opposing that abominable practice of slavery which is the scandal of religion, of England, and of human nature. Unless God raised you up for this very thing, you will be worn out by the opposition of men and devils. But if God be for you, who can be against you? Are all of them together stronger than God? Oh, be not weary of well-doing. Go on in the name of God and in the power of His might." 
uplifting words for him that day that led him to continue that courageous battle until finally slavery was ended in England. And this devotional from online, a listener to a popular podcast of pastors had written in after she became a believer and trusted in Christ, and she had joined a local church, and she was very filled with enthusiasm and joy and hope and peace, and then life became difficult. Perhaps you've been there. In the good days, things are going swimmingly, everything's fine, but then things feel dried up in life, you feel parched, you feel like things aren't going the right way, like the whole world seems to be turning against you, perhaps. It reminds me of the words we read from the prophet Jeremiah, that it's like the parched land of the desert or the salted earth. Salted earth is a terrible thing, nothing will grow in it. And we find ourselves, or we're leaning upon the wrong strengths, if we're looking for help in the wrong places, if we're not trusting in God, if we're trusting only in the things of this world, we can find ourselves in deep trouble and despair. As much as she was a believer, as much as she had joined a church, she was still struggling. Her faith was being tested by particularly difficult circumstances in her own life. Such spiritually challenging periods can be um, construed as a a drought. And the prophet Jeremiah carried out his ministry in an arid climate where he understood this, and also midst of time where it was a drought spiritually for the people of Israel. They, they felt far from God, they had turned from God, and they were kind of feeling what it was that they had bought with their lack of faith. Life was coming home to roost for them. And he had these words to speak. The first plant is trying to make do in their own strength, in the strength of the world, and it dries up and finds that there is no life, it withers away. But the second, the tree that is planted by the river or the stream, is the one who's planted in the faithfulness of God and in faith in the Lord, and its roots grow deep, and it is always growing life from the living stream of God's grace, and it is always abundant, it is always bearing good fruit, it always has leaf that brings shade and health and life, not only for itself, but can also cast shade for those that need help in the heat of the day. That's what it's like to live faithfully in the midst of difficult circumstances. It doesn't mean it's any less hot. It doesn't mean the rest of the ground is any more uh, or less arid than anything else. It doesn't mean that our lives look different than other people's lives as far as the circumstances that assail us or the things we find ourselves in. For example, what we're all going through today in our own ways because of COVID-19. But how we respond, what our life brings out of the situation is dependent upon where we seek our help and where our roots are founded. Are they founded in the Lord? That's a person, the person in the stream, who puts all confidence and trust in the Lord. When we cannot choose, when we cannot choose our life circumstances, we can choose, as I said, how we respond. And the people of Felderkirk, Austria, did just that. Napoleon was marching upon their town. It was the time of, of the Easter celebration. And they were all very worried. They knew what had happened to other towns that had been marched on, how they'd been decimated, and people had just been, uh, their, their livelihood had been destroyed, all their uh, property had been sacked, and, and many of them had been killed. They were worried about this. But the priest of that town called people together. And he said this, Let us not weary of praising God. Let us do exactly what we should be doing. And a council of citizens was hastily summoned to decide, should they defend or display the white flag of surrender? It was going to be on Easter Sunday this would all take place. And the pastor rose and said this, Friends, we have been counting on our own strength, and apparently that has failed. As this is the day of our Lord's resurrection, let us just ring the bells have our services as usual, and leave the matters in His almighty hands. We know only our weakness and not the power of God to defend us. The council accepted His plan. They worshiped God as they were called to do so. They, they rang the church bells. They celebrated the resurrection of Christ and the strength of God for salvation and trusted in the Lord. The enemy, upon hearing the sudden peal of bells, concluded that the Austrian army had come, arriving during the night to defend the town. And before the service had ended, the enemy broke camp and turned to march away. It'd be nice if every problem in life ended that simply because of our faithfulness in God. But what God calls us to is to trust, no matter our circumstances, in His love and His grace for you and for me that we live lives that trust in Him, 
and out of living lives that trust in him, that we bear good fruit and shade for others, even as we ourselves are comforted, that we can bring comfort as well to the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears to Abraham and his children forever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, for all who offer here and in their own homes their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the health of the creation, for abundant harvest that all may share, and for peaceful and healthful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For public service, for the government, for all those who protect us, including healthcare workers, for those who work to bring peace, justice, healing and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who must travel, for those who are sick and suffering, especially those who are currently infected with the COVID-19 virus, for those who are in any kind of captivity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all servants of the church, for all your people who are praying with us at this time, for all people who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. I invite you at this time to pray for your own needs that all together, even though separated in distance, we may all pray with you for your own needs. For these needs deep within each of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Giving thanks for all who have gone before us and are at rest, rejoicing in the communion of all the saints, we commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you through Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord. O God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you at this time and forevermore. Amen.